Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC channel. Because of the holes here and here, um, I wanted to put glue on this surface and then lay this down from above as opposed to putting glue on here and laying that down. Uh, to make sure that I didn't use more glue than necessary, I positioned this piece and then used a pencil to draw a couple of guidelines so I know where the, uh, the glue should end so I don't put glue uh, out and beyond that area and waste glue and add weight. Okay, the fuselage is ready to have the, uh, the sides mounted. I have mounted the bulkheads uh, exactly per the instructions. Uh, basically, you use the side panels, uh, one of them, to hold in place and then make sure that the tabs for the various bulkheads fit into their appropriate slots uh, and then tack glue it in place and then do a little more finishing glue. This is one of the places I've used a bit of um, a bit of jet set to uh, firm up the um, the CA glue much quicker. Uh, so I'd laid down mostly I used thin CA um, in a few of the firewall locations. I used some zap gap and then hit it with jet set. And of course, uh, with panels like this doubler and these doublers, I used slow. So uh, the next step is to put these sides in place and start tack gluing them. Uh, and I will cover that per instructions. So the fuselage is starting to come together, as you can see. A few things that I did just to add a little extra strength. Um, this seam here on either side of the uh, rear wing hold down panel and likewise on the front wing hold down panel where it meets the uh, fuselage doubler i put a little bit of uh, zap gap and then just kind of moved the fuselage so it it you know rolled a little bit left and right and filled that space there and then hit it with some jet set and that made a nice little glue fillet here here and back here and i did the same thing uh, held the fuselage vertically and did it along this joint here between this firewall and the uh the uh, fuselage doubler those seem like there are the critical points uh the places where things would break uh, the wing has the most torque over the fuselage at these joints and so uh, firming those up seemed like a good idea otherwise um, everything is per instructions used mostly thin ca everywhere else uh, putting the fuselage sides on uh, as you can see the tail boom is in place but as you can see i can rotate it it's not let me just try and pin this down here it's not glued in place as you can see it's just in position and they recommend that you do that before you put the sides on um, the I did not need to shape the holes and they may have uh, made some changes since the instructions were written uh, to the cutting process for these parts the holes are not loose um, but there is a teeny bit of motion. I did not need to sand them at all. And I didn't cut from the wrong side. This is the uncut end of the boom, and it is as fat as it gets. And as you see, I can actually pull this through the bulkhead. It is not um, tight. Uh, so when I glue this, instead of using CA or even gap filling CA, I'm going to put a little bit of 30-minute uh, epoxy uh, mixed with micro balloons and just coat that and rotate the boom around a bit to create, to get some of that uh, mix 360 degrees around the tube and inside that joint um, so that that space is filled well and I get a good uh, adhesion point there. I don't think it's gonna add a lot of weight. I'm gonna try to use as little of that 
uh, epoxy uh, micro balloon mix as possible. And during the curing process, I'll try to wipe away as much excess as I can if there is any. Otherwise, everything went together nice and as predicted, this is a very nice kit. Um, one thing you may notice is that I left the crossbar out here. That crossbar is for magnets for holding down the, uh, the canopy. And I'm going to be using this little guy here. Uh, this is a pre-made uh, spring action hatch latch and I'll be drilling a, a hole here for that. As you can see from the plans, if I install this right here, it doesn't need to penetrate very far. I may even add a doubler right here, cut another piece of fiberglass just to reinforce uh, the F2 bulkhead going in the forward direction uh, to make a little more uh, anchor point for here, and that'll just stiffen this up even further. But as you can see with these servos, let me see if I can get this to cooperate, uh, mounted on there, it just doesn't want to stand up straight for me. Just a second. Okay, if this is mounted on its side, which it's just not going to cooperate with, um, it is, let me just try and hold it with my hand here for you, and the camera. Uh, if this is on its side right here, and here there's plenty of room for this canopy to be mounted to this surface right there. And it'll be in the middle, and the way I'm gonna be doing the control rods, um, I wanna be able to access uh, the joint here. So I'm gonna be spreading these apart. I'm gonna run one left, one right, and I'm gonna have the servos, uh, one facing this way and one facing this way. And one of the reasons I want to do that is um, I, I want the distance for each of these to be as close to each other as possible. So if I mount one here and one here, the control rods are going to be almost identical in length, maybe a quarter of an inch in difference. And uh, since it is a V-tail, you want one side to perform the same as the other side. So I'm trying to make this as, as similar as possible left to right. I've heard of uh, in someone's build that they use two different servos. I can't imagine why you would do that with a V-tail. That just seems like a recipe for disaster. One might be faster than the other. Uh, one might have a, a different amount of total throw than the other and then you've got to try to compensate through programming when you use a v-tail try to make both sides identical and um, always use the same servos gluing the boom into the fuselage make sure that you have the fuselage lined up with the plans And this is why I like using a slower glue, because you have time to make sure everything is square. I used a couple packs back here, uh, just to make sure the F5 didn't move around. Also, um, make sure that the, uh, that the two pushrod housings are level. And I used 30 minute epoxy with a generous quantity of micro balloons. I pushed the boom slightly forward, uh, put a little bit of glue around, uh, kind of twisted it in to smear the glue around the inside of the joint, did the same thing from the opposite side, uh, cleaned up the extra and then realigned uh, all the parts for uh, final curing. So now they're just gonna sit for the next hour or so. I'm pretty much done for the evening, so they're probably gonna just sit overnight and cure. Again, the advantage of using a slower glue is gonna be that you have a chance to, you know, quadruple check your alignment of everything. I thought I'd do one last thing before calling it a night. This is a couple steps ahead, uh, but this is the nose block and 
uh, needs to be glued together I'm using slow CA um, the most important part is that these surfaces here be flush with each other so uh, use a slow glue so you've got time to work with it uh, get everything lined up and then clamp it in place and just leave it alone for a few with slow CA it's probably just takes a few minutes uh, but since I'm uh, done for the evening uh, that is the uh, last step so I might as well just leave this overnight clamped and that'll be nice and solid uh, the reason the other edges and surfaces don't matter is that that's all going to get sanded and shaped but you want this side that is going to glue directly to the fuselage to be straight and true I hope you enjoyed this video Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.